Hi, Wei Hong. Hi, JR. Um, I'm so excited about this session, right? I think most yeah, of us so. have, yeah, I, I think most of us have heard of new retail from Jack Ma back in, uh, I think, 2016, where he stated that new retail is a business model that merges online and offline experiences together. But how can it be done, right? The answer is, I think, is to implement the omni-channel strategy to your business. So within this one hour, both, all three of us are going to assure you the following three key takeaways from our panel discussion, right? So first, what's omni-channel? That's definitely. Second, how can you get more sales with omni-channel? And third, how can you start implementing omni-channel to your business? So within this one hour, we are going to tell you all these things, right? It's an intensive uh, session, right? So we are so fortunate to have Wai Hong and JR with us today. So Wai Hong is from 91F. Uh, 91F is basically a new with omni channel divider, right? While JR from Kid Moro specializes in educational and younger children, brand basically have both and also. So, right, I think before we start, we really need to have a quick warm up with our audiences today, right? All right, just type in the comment section if you are running your business just online, please type one. If you are running your business just offline, please type two. And if you are running your business on both online and offline stores, please type three, right? I think Kit Moro can type three already. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You can even, yeah. You can even let us know your industry and so that we can basically, it's good for us to understand you guys better so that we can actually share a more relevant examples and scenarios too. Right, I see 11133, yeah, wholesale FMB. Yeah, great, great. That's very great. Thanks for the response. I think like, please do not hesitate to just leave your questions if you have any and we will try to actually address to all of them if possible at the end of this session, right? All right, without further ado, right, FMB snacks. Yeah, cool. Let's get started, right? Um, Wai Hong, 91 app has been established in the global market since 2013. It has been like eight years already and still growing. Yes. As an omni-channel solution provider, can you share with us more what the new retail omni-channel solution is about? Uh, I think in, in layman term, new retail means that uh, it is actually a new kind of business model. So oh. those days when we are referring to retails, it automatically people will thought is about offline stores or boutique store in, in shopping malls, all that. But uh, near retails means that um, how we actually blend online and offline words together, online and offline of a business together to create the real omni-channel shopping experience for your clients. Because over the last 10 years, e-commerce like online has disrupted the industry so much so, so there are a gap pending for, for retailers to fill up. For instance, your client's identity, are you able to actually identify them when they visit your stores? And what are the things that they have bought or what are the time that they normally prefer to shop? Just like what Google has shared just now. Mm -hmm. All these are behaviors that are trackable on the internet. So are we able to leverage on them and duplicate the personalized shopping experience no matter which, which particular branches that they are visiting? So, so new retails, it, it actually means bridging the gaps and, and blend them together so that there will be no pure online or pure offline marketing later because at the end of the day, we are still dealing with one client. So we have to understand what is that purchase power, what is that preference looks like. So based on data, we are going to, to, to nurture more members' loyalty and to be able to sell them with lower cost of sales. So that is, it's not the matter of you have to do advertisement spending or else you, you will not have sales. That's not the case. We are looking at how well we actually nurtured our clients and give them a, a, a unified shopping experience regardless of whether they are with our online platform or offline platforms. Those are giving you the same points. Those are giving you the same experience are selling you with the same price. So, so this is how we, sh we, we should do. And this is how new retail uh, will do for you. Right. That's a very brief and in, like short and brief, short and sweet summary for new retail. So it's more towards like how do you actually bridge your online store and offline stores together and unify the customer's experience, right? That's very cool. 
Um, right. JR, Kimura has, as a brand who have built both online and offline stores right now, can you share with us like your, your business journey? Like how has it started and expanded from a retail store and now online store? Hey, great, yes. Of course, I have to share. Um, yeah. First and foremost, thank you for uh, this question for Journey and Kid Moro. So yeah, first thing is I have I have I have I have to I have to show something regarding what is Kid Moro, how we start. So I I know some of you asking why Kid Moro, what is Kid Moro? Because you know we we we, we know we know that one. So Kid Moro, yeah, it represents um, kids for tomorrow. So in the name itself, you already know us that uh, Kid Moro, I remember Kid Moro is kids, kids for tomorrow. So it means kids is our future. So we are here Kid Moro that uh, we advocate, we advocate, um, we, we, we advocate to the, to the young, young children. So while they are, while they are enjoy, enjoy playing and they are, they are, and they are learning while playing this. So that's why we are bringing uh, our brand, our toys, sport toys and edu educational toys brands. So we have a couple of brands um, in, uh, in, in our warehouse brand. We have uh, United Sports, our sport toys. Mm -hmm. We have uh, Thames and Cosmos. So we have also uh, figurines, Mario, Super Mario. So we are one of our distributor here. Super Mario's uh, Sonic, the Hitchhack. So right now mm -hmm. it's they are, and even we also bringing in Hasbro products here in Singapore. Ah, so in our offline journey, of course, our team, yeah, we we do we do our best to to push, and then to reach all the small stores here in Singapore, the small stores, offline stores. So our team every day they they keep on uh, pushing themselves to the limits that this products will will be in store will be in our merchants so we distribute this few of our brands in entire singapore and even we are we are we are not now here in um, singapore and we are trying to expand in we're planning to to go big ah. uh, so roughly our brand is already around around singapore's already Mm. And then our online journey, we start, uh, of course, we, we learn from uh, more on experiences from customers in offline. Mm. So why you didn't have online? So Kidmoro mm. is in online or in offline. So that's why our, our management, we plan to, to open our online e-commerce um, exposure. So now, um, Kidmoro, we... I cannot say we are already big, but uh, we are humbly, slowly moving forward to e-commerce. And then I know some of you, uh, you, you, you see us from uh, this kind of uh, online, online business. Mm. And then, yeah, Kidmore, Kidmore journey in online for this few, few months, of course, the pandemic it affects with us. Mm -hmm. so, but we, we, we see us a big opportunity for us. To to uh, to boom this uh, this opportunity to boom uh, to boom move forward. Right, very interesting. Kids for tomorrow, kid tomorrow. I think next to new channel for tomorrow. Is it already? <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Yeah, I think I'm sure that the pandemic and talking about opportunity, right? I think the pandemic has impacted the retail stores a lot. And glad that you know Kid Moro has started the online stores before the pandemic has hit. I think you, you are on board since three years ago. That's really good. And then we have, you know, Curse Cursing, we have Wilson here, we have uh Kwok Siang Nyo and uh, Wilson, they are all running um online and offline stores. So I think you have a very good case study that how can they basically, all of us basically, learn from you. So um can you, JR, I, I think I wish I should understand a little bit more. Right. Can you share with us more on the challenges that uh, the business face and the actions that you basically has taken uh, to overcome this challenging time, right? The opportunity that you were mentioning. I think we will be very curious to know. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, of, of course I have to share um, what happened before the before the uh, before the lockdown happened in Singapore. Mm. So we, we 
we, we, we hear news from the government that we will, of course, we, we there's a big challenges for us, for the company that we close the offline, the big offline business. Oh. And then we sat down with our management and books. Uh, what, what is our plan? And then we see this a big challenge. And then we look, we, we look this one for a big opportunity in e-commerce. So because we, 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 all, we, close in, in the, we close the offline business, so we are in the online. Oh. So the, the big twist is because we, are, we know that we are, we are, bringing, the, we are bringing the toys, uh, toys products, educational toys. And then the big twist that the, the, the management come up with is we bring in the essential products so that we will, we can, we will still be able to open our, our business here, even if we are in the, uh, in our main main build main warehouse, still will be able to re to release a products. So we are bringing in essential products. We are selling essential products in online, uh -huh. and these products it boom a lot. Wow! And then once we get sell for these essential products, uh -huh. make it as a, a a a market, and then we, for example, we get orders. We sell it. Once we, we pack it at deliver to the customers, we put some vouchers, oh. um, membership cards, just like a vouchers that or give uh, we give uh, a little notes that right. thank you for uh, purchasing us and helping us for this pandemic time. Oh. Can you give us a review to our products on in online or in store in online, and then we we, we spread this to all the to all the orders that we receive. So after that, we hear some feedbacks and they go back to our uh, online websites. Mm -hmm. And then they keep on buying, buying, buying because we know there are people. They are staying mm -hmm. on the, in the house. And then I think they give, we, give, we give them the, the right way how, how, we, how we bring them to our Kodmoro websites to purchase. Right. So during, during, the pan, during, the, during the lockdown, we just uh, we twist a, a little bit about the products. We find products is what is the most trend, and then we bring this product trend as our tool to bring them back to our websites. And then what is what is this? We offer we give them a good offer. Then we of course we will we will commit it. We will visit their websites. And from there we heard some more sales more some questions and more some uh, more um just like we hear some great feedback to the customers mm. or visitors to our website yeah yeah good to know i think you have a good point like basically the opportunity is like you see okay now people are staying at home what will be the opportunity like are they saying if you're kids you're going to choose the right product that targeting the kids because maybe last time you are targeting, for example, you could have strollers, you could have other products that's more those outdoor, but now you switch the focus to some of the products that's catering to those who are basically now who are staying at home, for example. So that's a very good strategy. And on top of that, you basically do it more personalized. Basically, you just know, get feedbacks and things like that. I think that will be one of the really good ways to just switch the focus on the products and do it more personalized, right? I think, I think talking about this, the, the change of consumer behaviors, I think it has, the pandemic has forced us to adapt and adopt changes in a faster rate. Yeah, I always like to describe uh, this. The way that we run business is like the way that we run on the running track. Why do I say so? Because it's like a competition between us, our business and our consumers, our customers. You must run faster to just catch them up or maybe at least you have to run at their pace to just make sure that we are able to survive, right? Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, <laughs> I agree, I agree. Yeah, I think the cruel fact is really consumers today change their behaviors faster than I change my clothes. I know, this is a bit exaggerated. But Wai Hong, how does Omnichannel help businesses in adopting change? I mean, I mean drastic change, right? The consumer's behaviors by using data or by using anything that you feel that it will be really helpful for the business today by using Omnichannel? Uh, it, it, this is uh, a, a guaranteed yes. In, <laughs> in fact, 
the the business model of new retail itself is actually it, it born and what why does is here is because of the change in the consumer behaviors. So over the last few years, we have seen that people who are actually uh, lo lo looking at the online store, looking for information, trying to search for for a product uh, pricing information, etc. Mm -hmm. Beforehand. But then later on, they are not going to buy online. But what, what they are doing is they will actually go to your offline store to experience the product before making the purchase. So on the other hand, we are seeing also people who are coming to your store just to experience your products. But later on, they are going to, 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 to look at your website or online channels to see whether there are better bargains or is there any points that I can earn if I'm not buying from offline? Is, is the price uh, cheaper elsewhere? So these are the behavior that we have spotted, uh, which is growing. The the, the cross-channel visitations. I believe uh, many of you who are running in, uh, who, who are running offline stores out there might not be able to notice that because you, you got no tools to identify whether the, the person in front of me is, is actually a member already or not, and whether he or she has already bought something or not. So, so these are the things that we wanted to help our clients to, to achieve in fact. So, so, so why, why new retails is simply because consumer behavior has changed so much, especially in the shoppings. So when they are on online, what you can do is actually you're able to track all the behavior uh, data that we are seeing, what are the keywords that they key in in order uh, to, to find your products, and then how long do they stay particularly in your website, any item they have added to cart but have yet to check out. So what are the time that they normally shop? So that's the time where you have to put some push notifications so push notification have to be very targeted, even though you have a bunch of like 100,000 of members, but it doesn't mean that one, one copywriting suits everybody. So you have to understand uh, what are their tastes. Uh, are these are the people that can afford a higher price product. So that, that are people, uh, that are the members that are more sensitive towards price. So, so all these things are very important and you have to make decision based on data, but, but not wild guess. Wild guess will not last you. Uh, long, yeah. So, so, so this is what we think uh, business today should be doing. And in fact, and uh, online and offline is actually complementing each other. So, I, I, I don't see why there are people who are saying that uh, online is here to cannibalize your offline store, or I will have to protect my offline store, so I, I cannot focus on online. But in fact, New retail means that we should always blend them together and so that you can make use of both channels uh, advantages. Try to leverage on what online can brought to you. Online help you to reach a wider market. It's 24 seven, not closings. And it has no res restriction in terms of geographical area. You can serve people of, of the whole world, literally. But, but uh, what happened is the conversion rate is lowered because they can't touch the product and they, they, they don't have trust, they might be new to your brand, so the conversion rate in online is really little. But um, contradictly, in, in offline store, you will be able to see higher conversion rate. When you say uh, uh, Cirillo might have like every 10 people who are walking to Kip Moro, there, there will be four or five who will be making purchase because they, they can touch the product, they can feel it, they have more trust, more confidence. But what happened with offline is that the store will, will close at 10, 10 p.m. Now they, they can't even open due to the pandemics. So you see conversion in your offline store is high, but the operating hours, the geographical restriction are there. So you should always look at how you can secure and leverage on the benefits of both channels. Aside from just trying to secure more traffic to your own platform using digital marketing, take a step back and look at why don't you also uh, secure the traffic or clouds that, that been to your store. If you're operating in shopping malls, I, I believe uh, City Law knows this, that there are a lot of people, thousands of them are walking into a kid Row, but, but what do you do in order to secure them, to convert all these offline traffic to your own store also? So that's one of the very good cool tactics that uh, City Row has shared with you guys. Whenever they are making any purchase over the counters, try to also give them some skins just like some, some online exclusive vouchers, mm. online only deals, what are the benefits that if you're buying from us offline. This is what happening in, in Uniqlo, in, in Family Mart also, in fact. Even, even like for Uniqlo, some of the sizes, double XL, triple XL, is available on the internet. You can't have it in, in store, you can just touch it, feel it. So, so this is actually tactics to actually move your client from offline to online.
while they're on your website or they downloaded your apps, you can actually push notification to them to tell them what's happening in the store, what are the range that coming in, and also some give them some voucher that is applicable for offline purchase only. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? You're actually trying to redirect online clients to also experience your offline uh, experience. So, so we see this as a nurture of OMO members. In fact, near retail means OMO. What is OMO means? Online merge offline. It's not, it's not tour. Those are people say to all to online, offline, to online. We are talking about how do you merge them together so that you have only one membership so that you can have unified shopping experience. So by nurtured more OMO client, eventually you are going to have a higher stickiness client. Because, because client that based on our data, clients that has purchased from you from both online and offline worlds, eventually they will have better loyalty. They understand the convenience, the values, and they have more trust. So this is how you build your branding. Yeah. So this is something that I would like to share with, with the audience today. So. Yeah, I see JR has been nodding his head. Like, yes, yes, it's very true. <laughs> <laughs> really, beyond just O to O, it's like what Wei Hong said is now it's now we have to learn this new word called OMO, online merge offline, or I think vice versa, right? And uh, I think it's very true. I think it, even the data, I think it has gone beyond just uh, demographic or geographical data. I think the opportunity lies on, you know, how much is your understanding on your customer's behavioral data, I would say. What do they like? What do, how do they, uh, what do they do? How much do they see on their products and things like that? So I, can say, I think if you have your online store, right, you will have a lot of finance cards and things like that. But imagine that you are able to cater to all those customers who are visiting your online stores. And then you'll know that, oh, this person has been buying products from, for example, buying toys from my offline stores, toy A, toy B, for example. You know that, hey, they have a, um, a, 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 what, a kid at home, or maybe they would have a, how old is the kids and things like that. So if you know this data, you are able to cater to them better, the communication and things like that. That's very true. I yeah, think- I just how, add on now, Vincent. To the audience, uh, in, in fact, what's happening out there is the, the, the rise in this uh, privacy protections. I believe you guys noticed if you are iOS users that they're asking your permission whether you want to let your apps to track you or not, to track your data or not. And trust me, majority of your of, of you guys out there is, is, is going to click on ask app not to track. Uh -huh. Even like Google is going to face out your cookies. And, and what happened is Alongside this rise in privacy protection, we foresee things is going to be more complicated in terms of your ads algorithm calculations. So it's getting blurred what your clients wanted, what is their behavior, what is their preferences. So it all goes back to square now, whereby you guys can no longer just rely on digital marketing. Those days we are talking about putting so much ads on Facebook, even though on Google, so that you, you, you gain traffic, but how do you actually hit the hot button of your client so that you have conversion? That's the other story. And all these iOS and Google's, are, 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 they're not, not trying to make your life harder, but this is to comply to the privacy protection restrictions. People nowadays are more prone on that. So, so what we are seeing is you have to start looking at your organic touch with clients. We are talking about real interactions direct interactions with your clients, with your members, so that they, they can appreciate your brand, they have loyalty. So, so we are talking about organic one. So you have to really take, take a look at your current websites, how you design that loyalty programs, how well it's being designed, is it smooth to use, what are the values that you, you provided, so, so how apps can help you, etc. There are a lot more things you have to take a look back rather than just rely on that. Because I believe majority of you who are doing ads out there, you're having very bad ROI right now compared to 10 years back. That's normal because this pandemic has forcing everybody to allocate more resources on online channels. They can't do billboard, they can't do cinematic ads, they can't do, do events. So what do these big boys do? They, they all head to Google, Facebook, and, and also Instagram, so whatever online platforms. So, so chances is the competition there is very high. And, 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 and the, the entrance to, to, to become an advertiser in this digital ads platform is not high. So it's very saturated out there. So look at how you actually take care of your own memberships. If you have your own memberships data right now, look at how you can utilize them, reactivate them, and, 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 and take care of your existing members while 
doing access for new 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 traffic, new members recruitment. So so this is very right. important. Right, understand. I think I think um I have always I think I have heard this about this before. I think I have seen a lot of researchers sharing the same finding, which is the cost to acquire a customers, a new customers is actually five times more than how much you have to spend to actually retain an existing customers. It is. Right. Yes. Yeah. So JR, agreed, agreed. can you share with us? Yeah. How 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 <clears throat> what have you done? I mean, in terms of keeping keep morals customers. <laughs> okay. Um Based on our in our Kidmuru as a team, we mm-hmm. yeah we, we of course we every day we will we will discuss more on yeah in our uh, current customers our members our loyalty members here in Kidmuru. Um, of course, every day or not not just every week, twice a week, we we will send them an exclusive promotions. It's mm-hmm. like um, every time. If every time they see us, they, they, they can they can see new, and then we offer so like a special a special to them, and then of course we we never stop um we never stop uh, recruiting more more members, uh, more were coming in, and then yeah we we separate them in 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 different uh, level, mm. so they they can see that we are we are this kid Moro, we we prioritize us. And then we, we feel as special. So um, Kidmoro right now, in in terms of uh, memberships, we cannot we cannot I, I cannot see it uh, I cannot see it big, but we we keeps uh, keep merging ideas with, with our team to to bring this back uh, to bring this become big, and then of course we will be molding for this uh, for our for us our Kidmoro, and then. Uh, terms of our um, brand, so we maintain also our brand to be uh, to be known, and then not only here in Singapore. And then we, oh. right now we are we are now in the US. We are bringing United Sports and wow. uh, uh, Vigo BB Toys products in US, and then it, there in uh, Amazon and Walmart. So we are remoting selling there in US. So uh, right. we hopefully in the future, Kidmoro is already in the uh, in in global and in international. Our brands are in-house brand in the future, right. hopefully. <laughs> yeah, I, it will be, I'm sure that sl- sh- slowly but surely, I'm sure that you are going to reach there, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think yes, that is our big dreams. <laughs> big, big vision, right? The direction. I think that's a very good <laughs> yes. point. Uh, I think during this pandemic, right? Uh, it's always the time for us to actually keep the human i mean keep keep the connection with our customers right because offline is not going to be openings i mean yeah it's limited right now so the the customer touch on online will be really the 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 essence the connection right so all right before we actually go further i think even if you guys have any questions i mean uh those who are listening to us please feel free to just drop your message in the comment box or maybe in the q and a so that we can actually address to them later on uh, so I think I think um, we have also one more agenda in the beginning. Remember the three, three key th- uh, three key takeaways after this session. I think the last one is basically how to get started. So now we know that it's really important to do omni channel. But how to get started? So I think Wai Hong will be really the best person to share with you. You know, if a brand wishes to explore more on omni channel strategy, how can hey. they get started? Yeah. yeah. I think b- b- before I go to how how do we get started, mm. I want to echo what uh Cirilo had shared just now. Yeah, yeah. By by looking at Kidmoro's strategy, you guys already can see they are trying to build that direct interaction with their clients. So so those days when we are referring to digitalizations, many are talking about opening store in marketplaces. It's totally fine to opening store in marketplaces, especially when you are new, when you're trying to just digitalize so that you can get to understand what is e-commerce about, what is the process of the fulfillment of the order picking of customer service. You have to go through all this tough path. It's like an incubator to make you a better e-commerce merchant, right? So, so what happened, but, but what happened later on when you grow Beagle? You, you, just like, like Kipmoro, they are, they are actually not, not small anymore, but, but if you're on marketplaces, you wouldn't be able to take care of or, or control or own your members. Data belongs to the marketplaces. 
But when you're talking about branding or recognitions, your, your brand exposure is very important. Like all, all kind of behavioral data that I has mentioned just now, like what Google has said, shared before, you wouldn't be able to enjoy that because these are all belongs to the marketplaces. So what you're doing is you're literally uploading your products to sales, but you're selling blindly. You're selling blindly. You do not know who are they, what is their age, what is their location, what is their races, what is, what is the, uh, their purchase power, what is the frequency that they will be buying, how, how big is the household, how many kids under them, yeah? So this is what Cerero is trying to do also, wanted to understand clients, is there a baby boy, baby girls, how big is the oh. household, how much you would be able to spend to, to afford toys, what kind of toys that you need. So that I push notification, I give them voucher that are relevant, but, but not something that is not relevant to them. So that's actually meaningless if you are doing so. So, so this is uh, why it's important to make sure you, you, you still take good care of your own platforms rather than uh, over-focusing on marketplaces. Marketplaces, you, you should be learning how to utilize them. For instance, whenever you're shipping out Pip Moro's, um orders from, from marketplaces, you can always like, slip in some, uh, download our app, scan the QR code and flyers, downloads to entitle for apps first time, download vouchers, apps only Dale that are available to purchase over the app only, but not in the offline or on your webs. So this is some 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 techniques that you can use because you wanted to leverage on the on the traffic that the marketplace can brought to you. So this is very important. And then talking about for those who have uh, already uh, operating in offline store, how how do you actually kick kick off this new retail deployment? You already understand new retail is important. You understand the values importance to 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 providing an omni-channel experience to your client, both online and offline. So, so how do you actually do that? In, in 91 apps over the last last eight to nine years, in fact, um, we are serving people like Yuan Sung, Family Mart, Timberland, Such Puppies, LV, Dior, Puma, Sketches, mm. a lot of them. Yeah. And, and one very important part that I would suggest is you deploy things in phases, not everything in once. So during the early phase, we're going to help our client to build a really solid uh, e-commerce platform, online store, their native mobile apps that are loaded with online selling capabilities, loyalty program, a comprehensive one, and also very important, the CRM in it. Because CRM is what you can do to actually filter and understand further how members' insights looks like. So you have some quadrant like the NAPL module so that at a glance, you already can know under L means loss, what are the members that are, that are in the loss bracket. So you know how, what do you want to do to this bunch of people to reactivate them and how you actually nurture the A members. A members means active who are already constantly purchasing over the last two months without stopping. So you have to understand um, each uh, relevant strategy catered to different group of people. So we are going to build all this platform for our clients. And after launching, we, we are talking about some uh, OMO techniques like the quick navigation to your offline store, how you lift the barrier uh, of your offline people. Because I'm sure for, for Celero, your staff wouldn't be, 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 be so welcoming in promoting your online platform. Okay. <laughs> this is contrasted with their interest. They're, they're, they're having commission miss, KPI miss if, if my client is buying online. So why do I need to do that, right? Hmm. So in fact, exactly. Uh, we already have some features that are able to detect how many people that this bunch of offline promoter has brought to online. And the system will be able to generate the report based on this. So the management will still be able to channel all this incentive back to the, to the retail wow. staff who are, who are wow. doing this kind gesture of uh, helping you to securing all offline uh, traffic. So, so all these are very important tools and techniques that uh, we will be planning for our clients. And after about three to six months later, when their clients are already adopting very well, we are, we are going to have the integrations for, for last mile of omnichannel integrations that we're integrating to your post system, you're integrating to your ERP, your inventory, your marketplaces orders, so that you can have the real omnichannel experience. So whenever your, your, your client is walking into Kid Moro, your staff will just have to ask him, are you one of our members? If yes, can you please show me your, your mobile app? So in the mobile app, there's a, a membership barcode. You can tap on it. Okay. And the post system scanner, we just have to scan that immediately. We are able to detect, oh, this is uh, which members, what is the membership tiers, what are the points that are available for, for, for redemptions. And we have to uh, reward these transactions 
also with points. So regardless of whether it's online or offline, we still have the same uh, uh, rewards or treatments. So, so, so this is uh, what we are going to do and how we will help our clients to deploy all these things. So from setting up very important tools to all these OMO techniques drive, drive in to, 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 to fit to your current business models. And lastly, we are going to talk about the integration. If you already have your POS system, we're not going to ask you to change your POS system, your ERP, that's impossible, yeah? So, so we are going to do uh, some, some API integration, exchange of information to make it as seamless as possible. So this is uh, basically how a new retail deployment will, will, will happen. Yeah. Right, right. It, it, it's a very, it's a very uh, comprehensive uh, uh, systems. Basically, it's already in place that right the business can straight away just fit it right into right. Uh, our businesses, right? In fact, we 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 over the last twenty years, even hmm. before ninety one app founders, we actually founded uh, Monday.com, Bit.com, which eventually acquired by Yahoo and eBay in oh. Taiwan. We are, oh. we are actually a Taiwanese company originated from Taiwan with operation in Hong Kong and Malaysia right now, uh, listed in Taiwan. So, so what we are constantly doing is actually the fine tuning to sharpening the UI UX, how well your app should perform, is it ergonomic uh, enough, uh, how many steps it takes for your clients to check out, the, the button, the words, the, the colors, all, all these things uh, what we are constantly fine tuning. So it's off the shelf products so that we, we want to make it as affordable as possible for oh. even the SME because for new retail deployment, that's not even an answer of yes or no, but it's only a matter of time. You can see many people, like many of our clients who has already deployed this thing a few years back, this pandemic has not only stopped, has not only they do not put a toll on their revenue, but in fact, they gain massive advantage. Like many of the competitors who are not ready on the internet actually went to them so, so, so they see a rise in terms of their profit margin in, because online selling, the cost of sales is lowered. So they have already secured all these app members' downloads. They can just push notification to them without needed to do SMS blasting email marketing, which is not really great in B2C world. Mm. So, so this is the, the, the effect that we have seen over the last few years that the earlier you deploy this thing, the earlier you plan for your future because this is like a trend. At the oh. end of the day, we are all going to be driving electrical cars, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Your, your, core, your core client is going to be people who born after the 80s, 90s, 20s. And these are the millennials. And these are the people who are growing together with internet, who are growing up with internet. Eventually, other, the other generations like our dad, our grandpas are going to leave this world behind. So, so what happened is you have to make sure that moving forward like five, 10 years onwards, even, even those who were born in the 80s are already at 30 plus approaching 40. But, but these are the people that are supporting the market. They are the core. How well do you actually adjust your strategy to actually fit this core's appetite? So the so near retail is, 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 is not a question. It's only a matter of time. Whether you do you adopt it earlier or, or do you lagging behind then uh, I think chances is you might lose a lot of market share. Yeah, I, th I think it's like make your business future proof with omni channel, right? Yes. Just to make yes. for future, right? So it's like we prepare ourselves for like, you know flying cars and things like that. So okay, while well, we are waiting for um our audiences to actually uh write down their questions, uh I would have uh some something that I wish I actually asked during this year of time also since you guys are here. I yeah. think I, I have one question for JR actually. I think JR, you have been, you know, your business has been in, um, on, you have your website store, you have marketplace, and then you have your offline stores and things like that. So how, how do you see all these three platforms? Just now Hong was saying that they are not, marketplace and website are not com um, competing each other or cannibalizing each other, but they are actually complementing each other. But from your point of view, in terms of sales and et cetera, how, how do you see it? Yeah, um, yeah, of course, Wee Hong, uh, he mentioned a good point uh, about the marketplaces versus uh, websites, on uh, company websites, our own websites. Um, so marketplaces, of course, we, of course, we leverage our products in marketplaces. And then, yeah, from there, uh, we, we can get more, uh, more exposure to our products. But these customers, we... We will, we will not uh, we will not stop there that they are in the in the marketplaces. We will bring them into our Kidmore websites. 
our own websites because we can see a big future to our websites. Then from marketplaces, we will use them to bring in into our, uh, us, our uh, VIP members in our Kidmoro own websites, not their marketplaces because their marketplaces, they have their own marketing. They have their own social media to exposures. They get commissions from us. But the one thing that uh, we, we do, we keep, uh, we keep pushing that once we get order from marketplaces, we bring them into our Kimura websites. That is the big, uh, the big steps that we were doing right now. And then, as uh, as much as possible, we uh, we customize our contact with customers. We we use WhatsApps. Mm. We use WhatsApps and we do direct contact with us. And then you, they can call us, they can message us, and we can answer them perfectly that they can we can cater their questions about toys about this how it functions so the the directions is our products in marketplaces is the exposures of the brand because they are very strong in we know they are marketplaces in uh, in singapore is uh, lazada shopee holding by amazon they are very strong in and then we are there yeah shopee q10 yeah of course they are the exposure is there and then, of course, we will we will just we rely on them. But in in the behind, we we bring these customers. We bring in them. We bring in in our Kidmoro. We use them as our big tools mm. um, for for us to for us to 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 become big. Mm-hmm. And 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 then uh, in in Kidmoro, yeah. We, of course, we I, I discuss about uh, we customize the the customers. Uh, Questions because that one is because people is very different that I have go to your store and then I want to ask that what is the product because online is I want I want to know what is this product because we're putting only pictures there in the in the front of the customers then I want to call I want to buy this what is the functions of this for how old mm. so in that way we 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 cater the 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 customers uh the customers questions regarding our, our our company regarding our products so that is the good uh, we we just um, we focus on leveraging our products in in market cases but still to go back to our kid moral as our core yeah as our core members of our kid moral websites ah uh, that's cool wait how do you think about it but have just that, that's in fact the the right move and I'm glad that Celero already are implementing that because I, I believe the audiences also understand majority of them could be already selling on the marketplaces. So marketplaces, in fact, uh, we realize it's a place that are serving more price sensitive clients. People who are on the marketplaces are constantly looking for better deal. Free yep. So if there are no free shipping or better deal, then I will <laughs> do next round when, when it's happening. Add to cut first, right? Add to cut first. <laughs> also being exposed directly to your similar products or the you known protections to, towards your brand loyalties. So it's a place, um, just like Tesco, when you have a lot of jams, measuring, everything listed or, or putting on the racks and, and, and it's up to the clients to, ch- to, 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 to pick. So it is a place to, to help you to, 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 to have more exposures. And, um, but if you're talking about brand loyalties, uh, really quality members that you can command higher profit margin later, try to always drive them back to your own web or apps mm. or any other platforms that you have so that you can have more direct interactions with them. And imagine if you're able to secure like 5,000 or 10,000 of your members loyal to your brand's one, each of them who are shopping from, from a platform of 500 bucks per month, chances is you're going to have a very sustainable income source that's going to recurse every month. And these people, these sales are very quality until the, the, the profit margin is high because you don't have to do advertisement to get them to buy. You don't have to give them voucher to get them to buy. So so, so uh, we wanted to nurture more quality members. Lah. So, so, so uh, your, your marketplace channels acts for different uh, objective. Like, like what uh, Cerrero has been doing. So I, I think I agree with what uh, he, he is doing. And um, I think the rest should be followed also. Mm, yeah, yeah. And uh, the one thing that I love about what uh, 
JR was sharing just now is that how uh, he makes the connection very personalized with WhatsApp and things like that. Because this is really the time to just keep the customers with you. Last time we were used to say like customer is king, right? But to me, right, customer data is God already. So you need to get their data. It's no longer just customer itself, right? And then how do you oil. like Sorry? Data is the new oil. New oil. <laughs> <laughs> True. All right. I think I have one question that I wish to actually ask um, uh, Wei Hong also on behalf of our audiences. Because I realized that like Wilson, uh, Neo, they are running f and business. They have retail and they have... Uh, online stores, but how can this omni-channel you know, 91 app will be able to actually help brands who are running f and you know, uh, retail and online stores? f and I think we have to look at uh, what kind of uh, f and that they're referring to. If they are referring to their, their, their like uh, snack sellers or mm, candles mm. or some, some uh, ready-made products off the shelf one, then I'll just treat it as uh, tangible products. So this is totally uh, uh, tally with what I has been sharing just mm. now. Say that your clients couldn't visit your 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 malls anymore, your shops anymore, and and you, you can still actually interact with them if you have your own mobile apps deployed. It's literally like you're opening shops on their handphone. So 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 for new retail, I, I believe a majority of you guys out there do not have your own apps right now. Many would still think app is not really working and I'm just a snack seller's order. But believe it or not, based on our data, there are more than 80% of our clients' revenues are deriving from apps. Means that people actually are more welcoming, just that they will only download apps that they wanted. Because apps give them so much deeper in terms of uh, the, the, the shopping engagement, in terms of the engagement. So it's easier to use, easier to navigate. So, so, so for your business, I would say OMO actually is applicable to every business, even though you're interior design firms, even though you're just a, a law firms. But aside from s- stepping into your law firms, what you can do is actually have content to share over the internet. Like if you are selling some fresh ingredients, the last Hari Raya or the coming up any festive season, you could actually uh, record some video sellings, uh, just like a video that uh, teach them how to cook rendang chickens. So mm. after, right below your videos, you put up some uh, uh, products that you are showcasing in the, in, in the videos. So upon re, re, uh, viewing the video, watching the videos, if they wanted to buy, what do they do? They, not, they, they, they just r- click, click right away, check out. Right. So this, you see this whole customer journey does not give them a chance to actually go out of your websites to compare. To compare, oh, is there a cheaper santan? Is there a cheaper curry powders? Mm. No, because right after watching the video, this is the journey, this is the psychological pathway of what they want. They want to join the benefits that you're, you're seeing in, in the videos. So, yeah. so if you're a cosmetic seller, you could be teaching them or giving some tutorial of how to make up to make your face look smaller, how to remove makeup mm-hmm. very quickly within five minutes, all that. And all these are actually uh, content. Content marketing existed for, for, for very long. It has been like more than five years in the market. But not everybody know how to sharpen sharpen it, how to utilize that. Even until today, we are still seeing people do not know how to use content, your co- good copywriting, good videos, good blog, good photos. Mm. But people are more prone towards all these things. So regardless of whether you're f or not, you whether you're selling product or service, make sure you have content to be shared with your clients because content is like the value added to, to your clients. We're not if, if you are selling F and B stuff, not do not sell your product because people hate selling. Sell mm. use and product is what brought the values. So 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 values is what you have to look look at. So so I think this is the advice that I can give to to the audience. Like look look how, how, look look at how you sell that thing. Even though your iPhone is not going to sell, or how many megapixel cameras how big the cap- battery capacity nowadays that's mm. that. Or you can take the, 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 the prettiest uh, sky photo, or you can have the best uh, uh, gaming experience. Mm. All this is like the humanize the, the way the product can, can work for them. It's very true. Mm. It's very true. The how, how you actually reach customers with the content that you have, the value that you have. You're right. not selling a product. I believe 
JR also, Kim Morris is not selling a product, it's selling like happiness because, you know, education. Yes, the engagement to the parents and the, 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 the kids. The potential of the kids. Yeah, or, kids for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kids in our future. They are, our, yeah. they are our future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And how... Solo, you see. So this is how things work, I believe. Yep, the value of it. Right, I think it's already 12 o'clock. I think, thank you so much, guys. I think before, um, I, just a quick summary, because at, uh, on what we have actually covered today, I think, uh, remember the three key takeaways from what we have shared earlier. So I think first one was what's omni-channel. I think it's a way to actually no longer just old, old, like what we're saying. I think second is that how can you get more sales with omni-channel? I think in short, right? you will have to provide a seamless customer's experience across online and offline, trying to be personalized, try to gather as much data as you could. For example, like what we said, the behavioral data and things like that, yeah. baby boy, baby girl, right? Yeah, being personalized. So communication could be personalized and they feel really attached to the brand, like attached to Kid Moral, for example. So you can actually retain them faster. And last, how can you actually get your omni-channel strategy started? Contact Wei Hong. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I hope you guys find this session useful. And then if you guys wish to basically, you know, know, understand more about 91 app, right? Just type one in the comment section and then we will basically get uh, our, our, our people to actually reach out to you guys. Right. Thank right. You. All right. Great. Thank thanks, you. JR. Thanks, Wei Hong. <laughs> thank Great you so session. Much. And of have course, nice a big thank you to you, Winston. Thank you for being our moderator. You know, you're always so punctual and I appreciate thank it. You so much and like i said like you know you have this this glow about you which you know just makes everybody smile and it makes it so easy to listen to and way long and Cyril, i just want to thank you for you know being so perceptive this was a really good session and i think you had some good quality content here so to the three of you thank you so much for being a part of this event thank, thank you, you Laurie. Thank you so much. see you guys thanks, All right, bye. bye thank you exabytes grow your business online